Systems of equations. Um, first, just as an introduction, a system of equations is when you've got two or more equations used to find two or more unknown values. Now, in Algebra 1, we're not really ever going to see more than two, so don't really worry about that. But I just wanted it to be on your radar that you can have more than two. It's possible to have three missing values. Um, and then your solution is the only combination of values that fits both equations. So we were looking at these mystery cups where you had like different candies involved, right? And you had yellow candies and blue candies and the riddle gave you information to try and figure out the two different types of candies, right? Now, tying that to algebra, um, let's say I had a riddle that told me in the problem that the combined number of candies was 16. Right, yellow plus blue equals 16. And then also in the riddle, it told me that the yellow candies equaled triple the blue number of candies, okay? Here's, you've got two unknown values, right? We don't know how many yellow there are. We don't know how many blue there are. If all they told us is that there were 16 candies, there are a lot of combinations of yellow and blue that would make 16 total candies, right? It could be that we've got eight and eight. We have even numbers. It could be that we have one yellow and 15 blue, or even one blue and 15 yellow. It could be two and 14, could be six and 10. You get my point. There's like, there's no way of knowing how many there are. You can narrow it down, but there's a lot of combinations. Same thing if the only thing the riddle told you is that the yellow was triple the blue. Well, it could be that there are four blue and 12 yellow. It could be that there's one blue, which would mean there'd have to be three yellow. It could be that there were, you know, seven blue and then 21 yellow. You've got to have both pieces of information to narrow this down. That the yellow has to be triple the blue and that when you add them together, you end up with 16. Well, here's how we use this information algebraically. Rather than guessing and checking and trying to find a combination that works. We know that the yellow candies equals three times the blue candy. That is the formula to find the yellow number of candies. Well, if I know that that's kind of like now a replacement for yellow, right? Yellow also is the same as having three times the number of blue. It's like a translation or like a code word for it. Well, that means in this other equation, I can say, you know what? Instead of talking about yellow candies, I can go ahead and say three times the blue candies instead. All right, so in class I kind of mentioned it'd be like knowing that yellow was amarillo in Spanish. Well up here, instead of saying yellow plus blue is 16, I could say amarillo plus blue is 16. Okay, so I can just replace and say, okay, instead of Y, I'm gonna go ahead and put three B and then plus B equals 16. Here's why this is useful to be able to do this, is now all of a sudden instead of having two different letters in an equation, which is problematic, I can't solve and know an answer if there's two things I don't know, now I'm down to only not knowing one thing, right? I don't know what blue is, but at least I'm not thinking about blue and yellow. All I'm thinking about now is blue in this problem. So this is a simple equation that I can solve. I put parentheses around it because anytime you substitute, I want you to put parentheses, but they don't, nothing's really being distributed here, so I can kind of ignore them and just say, okay, so really what I have is 3B plus B, oops, oops, equals 16. Okay, well, uh, 3B plus B, I can clean that a little bit if I think of 3B plus 1B is 4B equals 16. All right, and then if I'm trying to figure out what B is, I want to isolate B. So to cancel out a four, I'm going to divide by four because it's times four. So I'm going to do the inverse, which is to divide by four. And I end up with B by itself has to equal 16 divided by four is four. Awesome. Now I know how many blue candies there has to be. There has to be four blue candies. All right, well, now that I know that B is four, I can go up actually into either one of these problems and I can either say, okay, well, I know my yellow is three times whatever the blue is and now I know that blue is four. I can say, well, then the yellow has to be 12. 
okay? At the same time, I could also go to this other equation and say, well, I don't know what yellow is, but I know that blue is now y, yellow plus four, because blue had to be four, has to equal 16. And then if I solve this equation by subtracting that four, I end up with yellow equals 12. So, oh gosh, it doesn't help if you can't see what I'm talking about, huh? So I can use either one of these equations and plug in that four where the B was to figure out what yellow has to be. I get the same answer either way. So your final answer is always two parts because I had two values I didn't know in the beginning. So my answer is that there are four blue and 12 yellow, okay? So that's the actual answer that we're finding. That's the only combination that when I add them together, I get 16, but the Y value is three times the B value, okay? All right, let's look at another one. Let's say this time my red candies equals two times the green plus three. And I know that red plus green together equals 18, okay? Well, let's see, I know I have the formula for red. Red can also be known as 2G plus three. So that's helpful because now I can say, you know what, this R down here that's making things confusing because I got two different letters, I'm just gonna write 2G plus three right there instead. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in 2G plus three in place of R, and now I've gotta do the rest of the formula, so plus G equals 18. All right, I don't have any distributing, so I'm just gonna ignore these parentheses here. So um, let's see, 2G plus three plus G equals 18. Um, I can go ahead and combine like terms. So 2G plus G is 3G. That plus three is still hanging out out there by itself, and it all has to equal 18. This is a pretty straightforward two-step problem, so if I'm trying to isolate G, I'm gonna subtract this three first, plus three minus three cancels out. If I do it to that side of the equation, I have to also do it on the right side. Um, so I end up with three G equals 15. Okay, then I'm gonna divide by three, and I end up with G equals five. Cool, I'm halfway there. I now know that G has to equal five, okay? So now let's think about how I can use this information. I can use either one of these equations, whichever one looks easier to me. For me personally, I like this one because if I plug in, I'm not gonna have to do any solving. It's just gonna tell me what R is, but that's just my preference. So I'm gonna say R has to be two times G, which I now know is five, plus three. So R equals 10 plus three, R has to equal 13. So my answer would be both parts. G equals five, R equals 13. Okay? So it's just a matter of substituting one formula inside of the other formula and then solving from there. Um, sometimes they get just a little bit more complicated so let's look at, um, this is probably not gonna fit. I'm gonna go on to the next page just so it fits nice and pretty. Let's say 3x plus 9y equals 30 and y equals 4x minus one. Okay, all right, so I have a y formula, y is 4x minus 1, so I'm going to plug that in up here for my y formula. So I'm going to go 3x plus 9, but then instead of the y, I'm going to put the formula in its place, 4x minus 1 equals 30. Okay, it is still a one variable equation. Now I've gotten to where I don't have x's and y's anymore, I have all x's. We're gonna go back to Algebra 1 basics. If you see parentheses, you're gonna check for distributing, which this one does have distributing that has to happen before you can start messing with those. The other two problems didn't have anything to distribute, so I could skip that step. 
but here I can't. So I'm gonna get a 36x, and then nine times negative one is negative nine. So three x plus 36 x, and then I'm just filling in the rest of it equals the 30. I'm dropping the three x and the 30 down. Okay, now if I'm thinking about cleaning this up, well, I can go ahead and combine three x and 36 x makes 39 x minus nine equals 30. Okay, um, can't combine these because they're not like terms, so it's simplified now. But if I'm trying to isolate x, I'm gonna clear out the addition subtraction first by adding nine. The inverse of minus nine is to add nine, so negative nine plus nine cancels out. I always have to do it to both sides. So I end up with 39 over here, 30 plus nine, and then 39 over here oops, sorry, 39x over here. Uh, to isolate x now, the opposite of multiplying by 39 would be to divide by 39, and I've gotta do that on both sides. So those are gonna cancel out, leaving behind the x, and 39 divided by 39 is one. Halfway there, I know now that x is one. Well, now that I know x is one, I'm gonna go up to the y formula, and I'm gonna say, well, y equals four times x, but now I know that x is actually worth one minus one. So y equals four times one is four minus one. So y equals three. So my answer, two part answer, x equals one, y equals three. Okay? Oh gosh, I keep doing that. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, hopefully that kind of gets you started. There are some tricks and extra things that get added in, but that at least gives us a good fundamental of basic substitution.